Hey guys, so in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this rainbow design, which was designed by me, and I absolutely love this design, so I finally made a rainbow. I feel like I've been wanting to make a rainbow for a while, but I was really intimidated by like the rainbow shape to try it because I kind of didn't know where to start even, but then literally like two days ago I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens, and I love how this guy came out. He's so little too, I feel like you can kind of tell based on like the scale of my hands. But this rainbow's not huge. It's very little. Um, my sister said this rainbow kind of reminds her of like the Lucky Charms marshmallows. And I kind of see that. Um, so yeah, I, this is the design. It's just a little, a little rainbow. And oh my god, there are so many things I love about this design. One, it is really easy to make. Like, I feel like sometimes when I make something like afterwards, I'm kind of like oh gosh, like this looks amazing, but how the heck am I going to explain this? Um, this is not one of those designs. Like I made it and I was like, oh my god, this design is like perfect. It looks like a rainbow. It's easy and it's pretty light on bands. Um, I'll have the official band count down in the description, but I'm pretty sure it's probably like 150 bands. Like this guy is really light on bands. Um, and also I feel like because all the band colors, they're like split into like each row is a different color because that's how a rainbow works. Um, yeah, you really don't use that many bands. So I think this guy is probably around like 150 to 200 bands maybe. But I feel like it feels even lighter on bands because of like all the different colors you use. So yeah, I absolutely love this design. And I feel like I'm really kind of, I don't want to say I'm rushing to put out the tutorial, but I'm trying to get this design out fast to you because I love it. And I know you guys will hopefully love it as well. So yeah, also it's Pride Month um, when I'm posting this, so happy Pride. Um, my ra my nails are also rainbow because I did them for Pride Month. So yeah, it just felt like the right time to make a rainbow. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I am going to put this design in the playlist for beginners, so I'm going to go a little slower today because I really feel like this is a super easy, fun design and I want everyone to be able to make it. Um, and yeah, so you're going to want to get whatever you colors you want for this design. I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory what colors you want, because you want like six different colors so you can make a rainbow. And you don't have to use rainbow colors. Um, you could use whatever colors. I'm not going to. But today I'm going to be making another pastel rainbow. So I'm going to be using like pretty much the same as this guy. We're going to go from pink to purple. Actually, we start down here, so we go from purple to pink, but... Yeah, I'm just going to be using rainbow colors, so I'm not going to show you each one of my colors, but we are making a pastel rainbow again. So that part's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Um, you're going to need a hook of some kind. I'll be using my double-ended hook today. You don't need a double-ended hook. I just really love this hook, and I always get questions about this hook. This is a discontinued rainbow loom hook, so sadly, it's not for sale anymore, but um, yeah, I'll be using this hook. And you just need any kind of hook, crochet hook, um, rainbow loom hook. Just, just something. You're also going to want a C-clip to mark your rows with. Um, you can use C-clip, S-clip, G-clip. Just something to mark where you start and end. You can even use a stitch marker, a paper clip. Just something to mark where you're starting and ending. And you're going to want some stuff for the face if you want to do a face. Um, just like two different colored bands for the cheeks and then the eyes. For the eyes, I like to use these um, round 4 millimeter beads. And um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um... So the way that this rainbow works is we're going to start at the bottom at the purple and we move our way outward. And if you're a beginner and you want to make this, I think this is a really good design for you to make. So yeah, I just realized I forgot to put out all my bands. Um, also, the pattern will be in the description down below um, if that you find that helpful. So yeah, pattern, band count, all that's in the description. I put way too many bands out. We don't need this many. Um, oops. Sorry. I feel like my intros have been like extra long lately. I'm so sorry about that. But we are going to get started. So like I said, pattern, band count, all that's in the description. And yeah. <laughs> and I'm just going to pick up a few bands real quick. And we're going to be starting like I mentioned earlier. I feel like I've mentioned this twice already. But just so everyone's on the same page. Um, we're starting down here at the bottom. So you're going to want to get your purple. Or whatever color you want for the last color of your rainbow. Which for me is purple, so. Okay, so we're gonna start by making a tripled cat band on our hook. 
and then we're pretty much going to chain up three loops. And if you don't want that, know what that means, I'm going to show you. But basically, if my camera would focus, thank you. We're going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hooks. So we have one, two, and then three. Like that. And then we're going to grab another band. We're going to pull it through everything on our hook. Put both ends back on our hook. So we just chained up one. And like I said, we're chaining up three. So we're going to do that two more times. So we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook. And then we just put both ends back on our hook. That's two. So one more time. Pull a band through everything on our hook. And then put both ends back on our hook. And that'll be three. So this is what we're going to be starting with. Okay, so after we finish chaining up the three loops, we're going to go ahead and put one stitch in this first loop here. So we're going to pull a band through the whole loop, put both ends back on our hook, and then we're going to push the back loop over the front loop. And after we put one stitch in this first loop, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next loop, and we're going to put two stitches in this next loop. So we're going to pull a band through this entire loop. So just not this last loop here, or like the last um, bit from last time. And we're going to push the back one over the front one, and then we're going to push the loop from last time over as well. Like that. And now we're going to go into that same loop, and we're going to do the same thing again. So we have two stitches in this loop, so we're going to pull a band through just the loop, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. So now we have two loops in this first loop. In the first loop, ugh, sorry speaking. I'm also like so confused, I'm sorry, because I like, I had to refilm this bit twice because I kind of messed up the first two times. So I'm like, what haven't I said? And what have I already said? And it's all mushing together and my brain's a bit of um, a disaster right now, but it's okay. So right now you should have one loop, one stitch in this first loop and then two in this um, second loop. And once you have two loops in the second loop here, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next loop. And we're going to put two stitches in this loop as well. So we have one. Then we'll go back in and do another stitch. Two. Like that. And if you're struggling right now, I do have to say that this starting bit is the hardest part. Once we get past this, it'll be easy. So, yeah. Also, if I'm going a little fast for you, just remember you can always pause and then come back when you finish the step. I know I tend to loom fast. But, um... This is unfortunately as slow as I go. But once we put two stitches in that loop, we're going to go ahead and move on to the cap band. And we're going to be putting four stitches into this cap band on the end here. Um, also the cap band, because it's tripled, there should be, look like there's three loops on your, on your hook. Oh my god, speaking. But we're going to do the same thing. So you'll just pull a band through the whole cap band, both ends back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And like I said, we're putting four stitches into the cap band here. So that was one, this is two, three, and then four. Like that. And we're going to go count at the end to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, I know it's going to be a little bit confusing. Anyways. So we're going to put two stitches in like the other side of these next two loops. So we're going to go into the next loop. We'll do two stitches. So one, two. And then we'll go into the next loop after we've done two stitches in that loop. And we'll do two stitches again. So one, two. And then in this final loop here, which should only have one stitch in it so far, we're going to put three stitches. So we're going to go one, two, and then three. Like that. So now we're going to want to count to make sure we're at the correct number of loops. We should be at 16, so we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And it should be looking something like this. I feel like it's always easier to see what we did after. So you should have one stitch on this first loop, 
then it should go to two stitches, then two again, then we have four on the end here, and then we did two, two, and then we did three. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So we have one, two, two, four, two, two, and then three. So that's it for the purple section, and now we're going to be moving on to our next color. Um, I'm using this teal color for the blue, so whatever color you want for the blue, you're going to want to get that. So I'm just going to pick up some bands real quick. I feel like now that we've moved past the center bit, I'll be less confusing with my explaining. I don't know why I struggled so much to explain that. I just did. Who knows? Hopefully you guys got it. Anyways. So now we're going to go, instead of going into the like loop, we're going to go into this first loop we made here. So we're going to go into that. We're going to go ahead and pull a band because we're switching colors to blue through everything on our hook. And then push the back one over the front one and we'll be putting our C-clip on this one. So I do have to say that <laughs> at the end of each of these rows for this entire pattern, we will be slip, slip, uh, we will be slip stitching on the one that has a C-clip on it because we're flipping colors. Um, if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll remind you every row, but just a note if you already know what we're doing here. Anyways. So for this row, we're going to do some increasing. Um, I've decided for this design that I'm just going to kind of walk you through the rows and tell you exactly where to increase. But if you want, you can look at the pattern down in the description and it'll tell you exactly where to increase per row. And if you don't know how to read my patterns, I will also link up in the iCard um, a how to read my patterns video that I explain how I write my patterns down. So hopefully we'll all be on the same page and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to kind of just walk you through where we increase each row because I think if I tell you like all the exact spots where we're increasing, it's going to get real confusing. But you can also always watch the video as well as follow along with the pattern. So yeah. Hopefully everything will be fine. Anyways, so we have our first loop here with the one with the C-clip on it. And now on the next three loops, we're going to be doing increases. So this one will just be our starty C-clip single stitch one. But on the next one, we're going to go ahead and do an increase. And all an increase is is you're going to just put two stitches in this loop. So we'll go ahead and do one stitch. Go back in and do another. And that's an increase. So like I said, we're increasing on these first three loops here. So this is one increase. We're going to go into the next one and do another one. And literally all an increase is, is you're just putting two stitches in one loop. Okay. Like that. So now we have two increases. We're going to go ahead and do the last increase. So we're going to go one. And then two. So now we just did three um, increases in a row. And now we're going to do a couple single stitches. So hold up, let me count something real quick. Okay. So now we're going to do five single stitches. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do five. So we're going to go one, and a single stitch is you just do one stitch in the loop, and it increases you to two if you want to know the difference. So we're just going to do, like I said, five single stitches, so we're going to go one single stitch, two, three, four, and then five, like that. So we just did five single stitches, and now we're going to do three increases again. So right here on the front, we're going to do three increases in a row again. So once again, it increases, you just put two stitches in the same loop. One increase. Two increases. And then the third and final increase. One. Like that. And then the rest of the way will just be single stitches. So we'll just do single stitches until we get to the C-clip. And 
And then once we get to the C clip, that'll be the end of our teal row. So we're gonna count real quick to make sure we have enough, the correct amount of loops. Um, we should be at 22 loops now. So we're just gonna count around to make sure we have 22. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. Ah, lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. And don't forget to count the one that has a sequel on it. So yeah, we should be at twenty-two loops now, and it can it'll kind of start wanna curving. Blech. It'll kind of start wanting to curve at this point, and you can kind of just encourage it to curve like that. So your rainbow should be looking something like this. And now we're going to move on to our next color, which is green. So whatever you want for the green bit, I'm using this light. Kind of still a tealy color. And that'll be my green. So this row, we're only going to increase two stitches and the rest will be single stitches. Um, I didn't want to tell you which exact stitches last row because I'm like, oh my god, it's going to be so confusing because there's so much going on. But in this row, we only increased two and we're increasing on the fifth and then the fifteenth. Um, and I'll show you how we find that. But yeah. And I'm picking up bands once again. Okay. So now we're going to go through the one that has a C-clip on it. We're going to go ahead and pull a band through everything on our hook because we're flip- we're slip stitching because we're flipping to the next color. So we're going to go ahead and pull a band through everything on our hook and then push the back one over the front one and we'll move our C-clip up onto this band. So we'll take it off the band it's on and move it up onto the one that is on our hook. Like that. So like I said, we're increasing on the 5th and the 15th. And this one we kind of do have to count for. I kind of can't walk you through it because I'm going to get lost. So we'll do this together. But basically we're going to do four single stitches and then we'll increase. So this one, this one with the C-clip on it will be one. So this is one. My camera unfocused. I also think my light switched settings. I dropped it earlier. Hold up. Let me. I think it did switch settings. I don't know what my light is up to. Hold up everybody. You know what? It's fine. Um, the lighting just looked different suddenly and I was like, what happened? But I think it was just my light being weird. Um, anyways. So we're gonna do four single stitches, so this is one, and then we'll go into the next loop. Make sure you're not skipping any stitches. Yeah, I'm not skipping any stitches. Because as you can see, it kind of looks a little weird here, so just make sure you're not skipping anything. This is two, three, four. So after we do four single stitches, on this next one here, we're gonna increase. So on this one right here, will be our increase. So we'll go ahead and do an increase there. Like that. And now our next increase is going to be on the 15th. And the way I think is best to go about this is we're just going to keep counting from 5 because we know this is the 5th stitch. So we'll just keep counting and we'll do single stitches until we get to the 15th. So this is 5. So the next one's 6. And we're doing single stitches until I tell you we increased again. So 6. And I know this is 5 because we increased on the 5th, so that's why this is 5. The next one's 6. And we just keep counting. 7. 8. 9. 10. 11. Uh, I feel like my camera's getting out of focus. 12. 13, 14. So we know the next one's going to be the 15th. So we'll increase on that one. And you can always double check to make sure you're at the right one. And the way I like to do this is I'll find the increase. So I can tell the increase is right here. And then I'll just start counting from the increase. So I'll just go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So yeah, I'm in the right spot. That's the 15th right there. And if you want to know how many single stitches I did, if you're completely lost, you're like, I don't know how many. Um, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I did nine single stitches from the last one. 
and so we just did an increase and I did nine single stitches and now we're going to increase again. So on this one here we'll do our increase. And then the rest of the way will be single stitches. And I just need to write something down real quick. My desk is such a mess. I have markers everywhere. Um... Oh my god, if this pen would work. Is it not working? Oh, I have a pencil. I'm sorry. Ah. Okay. So we're just going to do single stitches the rest of the way until we get to where the C clip is. And I guess this design is a little different than my other designs because we actually stop before the C clip. We don't like do a stitch on the C clip because we have to switch colors there. But um, yeah, we're just gonna do single stitches the rest of the way until we get to the C clip. You know, this design I do think is really easy. It's just I feel like I always am like, how do I explain it? Whenever we have a lot of counting or like color changing going on. Well, not really the color changing in this design, but I feel like it's like. We increase on a lot of specific stitches, so I'm really trying my best to like walk you through it and really explain it to you. But yeah, it's kind of hard. Also, I feel like the counting is just unavoidable with this design. <laughs> but hey, if you learn how to do it with this one, you can probably do it with my other ones after. Because a lot of my designs have like the increase on this specific one, so, you know, maybe it's helpful. Okay, but once we get to the one with the C-clip on it, um, that's pretty much it for this row. Like I said, we stopped before the C-clip. So I'll recap what we did for this row. So we did four single stitches here, then we increased, then we did nine single stitches, then we increased again, and then I pretty much just did single stitches until the C-clip. And we should now be at 24 loops. So we're going to count real quick to make sure we have 24. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And your rainbow should be wanting to curve a bit at this point. And I think I said this last row, but you kind of just want to encourage the bending. You just bend it a little. But now we're going to switch to our next color, which is yellow. So get whatever color you want for yellow. For me, that is pastel yellow because we're making a pastel rainbow here. You know, my sister said, I think I said this at the start of the tutorial, but she said that this rainbow kind of looks like the one from Lucky Charms. And I totally want to make one that looks like, <laughs> like a Lucky Charm rainbow, because I guess like the Lucky Charm rainbow only has like three colors. And it's totally possible to do with this design, and I'm like, oh, I need to make it, because that would be so cute. I, I don't know. I, I absolutely love this design, so. Yeah. So there is a lot more increasing this row um, for the yellow row. We're doing four increases total, and they're kind of spaced out throughout this design. So there's going to be a lot of counting for this one again, but once again, I'm going to try my best to walk you through it. We got this, hopefully. <laughs> and believe it or not, we're halfway done with this rainbow already. We have um, three rows left, as you can tell by the colors we're going. We use six colors, so yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and slip stitch to yellow on this first one here with a C-clip on it. So we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook. Put both ends back on our hook. If I could pick it up. Which I can't. There we go. Push the back one over the front one. And then move it up. So we just slip stitch on the one that had a C-clip on it and moved it up. And now we're going to go ahead and do one single stitch. So we go ahead and just do one single stitch. And then on this one here we're going to do an increase. And then, so this is a third loop, and we need to increase again on the seventh. So once again, we're just going to continue counting. So we did one, two, and then we increased on the third. And then we're going to do single stitches until we get to the seventh. So this one's the third, so the next one's four, five, six. And then the next one will be our increase. So... We increased, I did three single stitches, and now we're about to increase again. So we're going to increase on this seventh loop here. And 
And like I said, there's in four increases this row. So we already did two of them and we have two more to go. So we're going to increase. The next one will be on the 14th. So we're going to keep counting. So this one's seven. The next one's going to be eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. So like I said, the next one's on the 14th, so this is 13, so we know the next one's going to be our increase, so we're going to go ahead and increase on this one. Like that. And then we're going to increase again on the 18th, so we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm pretty sure it's three single stitches here in the middle, and then we'll increase again. So we've done three of our um, four increases, and then picking up bands again. Oops, my camera's about to time out. Hold up. Okay. SD card has been switched. <laughs> Turns out I was running out of space on this SD card as well, so I had to switch the SD card out. As well as, like, redo the time thingy. Uh, anyways. So we just increased and we increased on the... What did I do? Oh. <laughs> I moved my pattern on accident. Um. So we just increased on the 14th, so the next um, increase will be on the 18th, so we just keep counting. So this is 14. Yeah. My hook was getting tangled in the in the spiral of my Umagurumi notebook. So anyway, it's 14. The next one's 15. 16. 17. And then this next one here is going to be 18. So we'll do our last increase on this one. Like that. So like I said, we did an increase and then there was like three single stitches and we increased again. And basically the rest of the way is going to be single stitches until we get to the C-clip. So we're just doing single stitches the rest of the way until we get to the C-clip. And once we get to the C-clip, or the one that has the C-clip on it, we're going to stop. And now we're going to count. So after the last row, we should be at 28 stitches, I believe. So let's just count to make sure. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So we should be at 28 loops. And your rainbow should be looking a little something like this. So now we're going to move on to orange. So you're going to want to get some orange bands. I'm using these pastelli orange. I think the pastelli orange rainbow loom bands are like one of my favorite things. I just, they're so pretty. And for this round again, we're going to be increasing four loops. So it's very similar to the last round where we're going to be doing a lot of counting and we're going to increase four times in total. So I think this round is very similar to the last round, so prepare for that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. I have enough bands now. So once again, on the one with a C-clip on it, we're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch because we're flipping colors. So we'll pull this band through everything on our hook and then put the push the back one over the front one and we'll go ahead and move our C-clip up. So that's our first stitch. Um, on the next stitch we're already going to do our first increase so this is the second stitch we're going to do our increase. Like that. So this is the second stitch, like I said, and we know because the, the one with the C-clip on it is the first one. And this is the second. And our next increase is going to be on the seventh. So this is the second one, so we'll just keep going and keep counting. This is three. And we're just doing single stitches when we're not increasing, if that wasn't obvious. I don't know. So this one was three, because I already did one single stitch. Four. Five. Six. 
So yeah, so I'm just gonna make sure it's right. So this is the second, three, four, five, six. So the next one will be the seventh, and that is where our next increase is. I was just counting backwards to make sure. So we just increased on the seventh. And our next increase is gonna be on the 16th. So we're just gonna count until we get to 16. So this was seven, so the next one's eight. So we'll just keep counting, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the next one's gonna be 16. So we're gonna increase on this one. So we've already done three of our increases, so we have one more left to go. And that final increase is gonna go on the 21st. So we're just gonna, once again, keep counting until we get to the 21st. And believe it or not, after this row, we have one row left, and then we're pretty much done. This guy also closes up really fast. So we're gonna be done really soon. I love how quick this design is. I feel like this tutorial might be a little long because I'm going slow trying to explain well. But I feel like once you get how this pattern goes, like, you're just gonna be able to make like a billion rainbows if you want to. Anyways, so this one was the 16th, so we're, we're gonna once again keep counting until we get to the 21st. So we, we were at 16, so this next one's 17. 18. 19. 20. So the next one here is going to be our 21st, so we're going to do an increase on that one. And that was our last increase, so the rest of the way is just going to be single stitches. And once again, we're going to stop before we get to the C-clip. Or, you know, we're going to go until we get, to, you know what we've been doing. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I over explain and I make it worse, so I was just trying not to make it worse there. But yeah. It's kind of interesting how we loom this because we're kind of like, I don't know, I feel like we're really, like I don't know when I'm holding this, I'm like really inside the rainbow. That sounds so weird, oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, we're almost there. So when, again, once we get to the one before the C-clip, that's pretty much it for this row, our orange row. And we're gonna count. So we should be at 32 loops now, um, which is a lot. So we're just gonna count to make sure we have 32. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So we should be at 32 loops. And I do kind of like to start encouraging it to take that rainbow shape just like a little bit. But now we are going to do our final row, which will be in our final color, um, which is probably red or pink for you. So just whatever you want for this last row. For me, that is pink. To me, it's interesting, like, how... Because, like, this is the pastel glow, and, like, versus, like, the opaque pastel. Like, it's interesting how different the colors look. I was just noticing this earlier before I came to film because I was like, oh, what color rainbow should I make? And I decided to do an opaque, uh, opaque, uh, opaque, I can't speak, opaque pastel rainbow. And I was debating if I should have just made it glow, but I wanted to use the opaque band, so I was like, it's interesting how, like, slightly different they are. I don't know. Anyways, our final row. So we're going to have six increases this row, um, which is a lot, but we'll just be doing the same thing as last row. And once again, on this first one here, we're going to do a slip stitch and move our C-clip up. So we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook and then push the back one over the front one. We'll go ahead and move our C-clip up. 
like that. And then our first increase is going to be on the fourth. So we know this one with the C clips on with the C clip on it is our first, so we're gonna count until we get to four. So this is one, two, and then three. So we know the next one's gonna be the fourth loop. So we're gonna go ahead and do an increase on that one. And then our next increase after this one is on the sixth. So this next one's five, because that was the fourth. We increased on the fourth, so the next one's five. And whenever we're not increasing, just remember we're just doing single stitches. So that was five, and like I said, the next increase is on the sixth, so. The next one's a six, so we're increasing. So that was five, we increased on the sixth. The next increase is on the eighth. So this will be seven, and then the next one is the eighth, so we'll increase on that one. So we were kind of alternating between doing single stitches and increases there, but uh, let me recap real quick in case you're confused. So we increased on the fourth, and this was the fifth, so we did a single stitch, then we increased on the sixth, then we did a single stitch on the seventh and increased on the eighth. Which I know is a little confusing, but hopefully that was okay. So now our next increase is going to be on the 19th. So we're going to just do single stitches all the way until we get to the 19th and we'll keep counting. And I'm picking up bands once again. So we'll just keep counting until we get to the 19th. So this was 8, so the next one's 9. And I know it's the 8th because we increased on the 8th. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So we're now on the 18th loop. Um, the next one's gonna be the 19th and that's gonna be our increase. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And once again, we're gonna kind of probably be alternating a little bit here. So we're increasing on the 19th. Our next increase after this one's gonna be on the 21st. So on the 20th, we're gonna do a single stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and do one single stitch. And this next one's the 21st. So we're gonna go ahead and do an increase. And then our next increase after this one's on the 23rd. So the next loop's the 22nd, so we're gonna do a single stitch. And then the next one will be the 23rd, so we'll do our final increase. Like that. And the rest of the way until we get to the C clip here is going to be um, single stitches. And I just need to pick up a few more bands. You know, I really like this pink color that's in the pastel opaque treasure box. It's, it's really nice. I don't know. So think about this pink. Like, it's such a bubblegum pink. Anyways, we're doing C-clips. C-clips. <laughs> single stitches until we get to the end. You know, I'm so tired today. I don't know why. I feel like it's because I've been doing so much socializing um, now that I'm home. Because, like, if you don't know, I'm currently attending a university and I'm home for the summer. And I've been hanging out with a lot of my friends and stuff and I'm just so exhausted. <laughs> like, I'm just so tired of socializing. I'm like, I'm ready for just, like, a break. But I'm hanging out with a friend later today, actually, so I don't get that social break, but it's okay. But yeah, I feel like I'm not, like, tired of, like, like, just in general, I'm just kind of, like, tired of people. I'm such an introvert at times, and I'm like, I need a break from everyone. I need to, like, sit in my room and just loom or something. Like, I need... I guess what I'm saying is I need my alone time, man. Anyways. So once we get to the C-clip here, um... Actually, we should count before, before we do that. So we're gonna count. We should be at 38 loops now, which is a lot. So let's count real quick. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, I think I lost count, uh, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. So once you've made sure you have 38 loops, we're going to go in through this, the one that has a C-clip on it. We're going to pull a band through everything. We're going to push the back one over the front one and we're going to pull tight. And we're going to go ahead and take our C-clip out. So the way we close this up is a little different. As you can see, we kind of have like this taco shell of a rainbow but we're going to want to stuff our rainbow right now so we're going to add stuffing to this and we're kind of going to stitch it closed and I'll show you how we do it it's not too hard um I just feel like we close this very differently than we do a lot of my designs so yeah but we're just going to stuff him real quick we're going to put some stuffing in he also I was thinking when I made this he looked like a taco so I don't know yeah so I'm just tearing up some cotton off camera I, I don't know. I always think it's. I always think of my aunt whenever I tell tear cotton in tutorials, and I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but she hates the sound of cotton tearing, and I don't know why. But I always just think of her whenever I tear cotton to put in my loom things, because obviously, like, I don't want to stick the whole cotton ball in just like that. But um, I always think of her whenever I tear it because she hates the sound. I think it's kind of a nice sound. Anyways, so once you've stuffed your rainbow, it should be looking something like this. It's not very sturdy yet. Um, we're going to start stitching it closed. So we're going to want to get some of our pink bands or whatever your last color was. If that's red, if that's pink, or whatever other color you did. You're going to want to get that color. And I usually come like right here. As you can see where I am. I'm on the end of the rainbow. Like right here. And we're going to like slip knot up like three... Um, bands. So we're going to pull a band through both ends on our hook, push the back one over the front one, pull it tight, and we're going to kind of make like a slip knot chain. So we're going to do that again. We're going to pull a band through everything, both ends on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. We're going to go ahead and do that one more time. And we're going to have to add to this chain, but this is just kind of to start with. And pull tight. So now we have like a slip knot chain. And basically, we're kind of just going to weave back and forth and literally stitch this together. Um, but one thing is we're not going to go through the whole loop like this because then it will get all lumpy. We're going to only go through like half the loop, like through the middle. So as you can see, like this outer one, we're just going through that half. And then we're just going to pull. And this, this tail will kind of get in the way and you can try to tuck it in. But it kind of doesn't stay down. It's just going to kind of be annoying for a while. You can kind of hold it down, but it's kind of just annoying. Anyways, so I'm kind of at the end of the rainbow here still. I'm going to come to the opposite side of where my chain is. I'm going to go through only like half, and you want to go through the outer, or I don't know, you kind of see how we have this inner half and this outer half. You're just going to kind of go through the middle, I guess. And then you're just going to pull this chain through. Like that. And now we're going to go through, as you can see, there's kind of these loops across from each other. We're going to go through these two that are across from each other. And once again, as you can see, we're kind of only picking up the outside loop. So we're not going through the whole loop. We're going through like only the outside or whatever the outermost part of the loop is. And then we're going to get our slip knot chain and we're going to pull it through. And basically you want to go through like opposite, if that makes sense, of wherever your tail ends up. So my tail's on this side, so I'm going to come to this side and I'm going to go like this through these two loops here. And once again, we're still only grabbing like the outer side. And then we'll just pull our chain through. And as you can see, the chain's on the opposite side now, so now I'm coming to this side. And wherever the slip knot is, is a little awkward, but just kind of do it the best you can. Still kind of go through the outermost loop. Then you just pull it through. Like that. And when you, as you can see, we're kind of just like stitching up the top here. And we're just going to keep going and do this all the way till, the, till we get to the end. Um, we're probably going to have to lengthen our slip knot chain at some point, but I find it best not to start with a really long chain, but just like add on to it later if we need to. But yeah, we're just going to keep doing this. 
So we just go through like the outermost loop on each half. And then we pull our slip knot chain through. That's pretty much it. And we are kind of alternating sides because you can as you can see the chain kind of moves to different sides. So I'll just flip which side I'm going through, get the outermost loops, and then pull it through. And my my chain's getting a little short, so I'm gonna go ahead and add like two more slip knots onto this. There's one. And whenever you add on, you just pull a band through what you have, and then push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then your chain will be longer. And I think that'll be long enough for me to finish this guy. And I find it helpful just to like squeeze the two halves together and the loops kind of just line up. And I just go through and pull my slip knot chain through. Then I'll go to the other side. And remember, I feel like the most important part or else this like top bit will look weird is to make sure you're only going through like the outer half of the loops. Basically, you're just kind of going through the middle of the loops. You're not like going through it like you do when you make a stitch is my point. We just kind of keep doing this until we get to the end. We just stitch it closed. Actually, might need now. Maybe. I'm debating if I need to add another um, slip knot on. I think we're okay. And you might need to remove some of the stuffing at this point. I think it's helpful to like overstuff it a little bit and then have to take a little bit of stuffing out at the end here and have it understuffed. And you don't want your chain to be too long at the end or you'll end up with like this big extra like slip knot chain thing. So I usually just try to only make it as long as it needs to be. And once you get to the end, you like can't pull it through anymore. You can go ahead and just tuck this tail in. You could tie the tail into the inside. But so far, I haven't had any issues of it coming undone, and I literally will just, like, stop. As you can see, I've kind of, like, stitched up the whole thing. And I'll just go ahead and tuck the tail in, and I haven't had any issues of it coming undone. So I think if you just, like, tuck it in, you're pretty much good. And that should be it. You should have a rainbow now. <laughs> Like I said, this rainbow comes together really quickly. Like, once you stitch the top together, it's just, like, magically done. So, yeah. That's pretty much it for the rainbow portion. I'll show you how to put a face on real quick. And then I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. But, yeah. So, if you really want to do a face, you're going to want to get your eyes. Um, I, you could use safety eyes if you have really small safety eyes. But I always use these 4 millimeter black beads. I got them from Amazon. I literally just searched like plastic four millimeter bead that's like round and this one came up and I was like perfect and it's what I use so you're also going to want to get a piece of dental floss. I find dental floss works best for this but if you have a different piece of string that'll work as well. And you're just going to put your bead onto the string. And then you're going to want to get whatever color you want for where you want the eyes to be. I usually use yellow. I usually put the eyes about right here, so I'm going to go ahead and use yellow again. You're going to put it on the piece of floss as well. Ah, so blurry. And then you're just going to fold over and go back through the bead. If I could go back through the bead. <laughs> And you'll just slide the bead onto the band, and then this is what we're going to use to put our eye on our rainbow. So we're going to do that again so we have two eyes. Um, another option, if you don't have beads but you still want your rainbow to have a face, is you can wrap a band four or five times around your hook, and then just pull a band through, 
and it'll do the exact same thing as this these eyes but your your thing obviously will have band eyes okay so once you've got your eyes on your bands we're gonna get a rainbow and I like to put the eyes like about right here I want to say so I'm gonna put one right here And we just basically use the band we pulled through to tie it in. So we'll pull the eye through like this, have both ends on our hook. We'll just push the back one over the front one. And I kind of hold on to the eye while I pull it tight. And then I just hide my tail into my rainbow. And that is pretty much how I attach the eyes on. Well, that is how I attach the eyes on. There's like no extra steps. I don't know why I said pretty much. That, that is how you put the eyes on. And I'm going to put the other eye. Where should I put it? I'm gonna put it right here. And we just tie it in like we did with the other one. There we go. And we'll hide our tail. I'm sorry, I'm hiding my tails on off camera. I hate hiding tails on camera. I've been doing this for how long and I, I just still can't do it. Like that. And if you want your guy to have cheeks, um, all my rainbows have cheeks. They felt necessary. I'm probably gonna switch out the color of these cheeks later, but we'll just use the pastel pink for now. You're going to want to come right where, right under where you put the eye, so my eye's right here. I'm going to come on this band right here underneath. I'm going to pull a band through in the color I want my cheek to be. I'm going to push the back one over the front one, and then I'm just going to pull it. As you can see, I kind of just pushed it over. I didn't pull it, like, super tight. And then I'll just hide my tail. And then that'll be the cheek for the rainbow. And I would do it to the other side as well. But I'm going to use a different color for my cheeks, so I'm going to go ahead and take these out for now. Um, if you want a mouth like how I did the mouth, uh, I show how to do it in my Lumagurumi Basics video, but all I usually do is I'll cut a black band and I will use hot glue to stick it on, so I'll just put a dot of hot glue on the face, set the black band on, and that's pretty much it. So, I think that is it for this tutorial. I hope your rainbow came out okay. If you make a rainbow, definitely share it with me. I would love to see how your rainbows come out. I absolutely love this design, and like it's Pride Month when I'm posting this, so I can't wait to just see everyone's rainbows. Um, actually, these rainbows will be coming to the Pride Parade with me, so I'm excited. Um, subscribe to this channel if you want to see what's coming. Uh, I have plenty of things coming. I actually pushed back this flower tutorial, which I've been posting a bunch of, because I wanted to make the rainbow, because it just seemed like the right time of year to make a rainbow. But this flower tutorial will be coming to my channel soon. It's supposed to be like a daisy. Um, so subscribe if you want to see when that comes out. Um, you can check me out on Instagram if you want to keep up with me, uh, or just see what I'm up to. I usually post daily, like, on my story, just various things I'm doing, so if you want to see that, you can check that out. Um, and yeah, you can also check out on Instagram or in the video, uh, if you're watching this before August of 2023, I am currently hosting a Summer Loom game, I'm giving away bands, um, and it's been a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see what you, else you guys make. Uh, I imagine some people might make this design for the Loom game, because we're currently in, like, a color round, I don't know. It's been fun, so yeah. Anyways, I think that is it for this tutorial. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.